are going to take a look at some sample problems <clears throat> for calorimetry. So in this first sample problem, we have a simple calorimetry experiment involving a candle and a can of water. And the temperature of the 100 milliliters of water increases from 16 and 4 tenths of a degree Celsius to 25 and 2 tenths of a degree Celsius after the candle burned for several minutes. We want to figure out what the enthalpy change is. Now this is not a coffee cup calorimeter. This is the other type of setup we see very often. When we have combustion, obviously we can't do a combustion reaction in water. Reasons that I hope are obvious. But what we can do instead is we can set up a metal uh, container on top of the flame. And since heat rises, most of the heat should transfer in. And in this case, we're going to assume that all of the heat did in fact transfer in. First important thing we've got to see here is this 100 milliliters of water. 100 milliliters of water is going to become 100 grams of water. Reason for that is the density of water we know to be uh, one milliliter per gram or one gram per milliliter, depending on how you want to phrase it. And when we are calculating enthalpy, we need the mass of whatever we are measuring the temperature change of in order to do the calculations. We don't need its volume. So that is 100 milliliters of water will turn into 100 grams of water. So what we will then see is that we know that Q is going to be equal to delta H. So we're looking for a number of kilojoules. The change in the temperature was eight and eight tenths of a degree Celsius. The mass of the water, because the water is changing temperature, is 100 grams. Specific heat capacity is four and 19 hundredths of a joule per gram degree Celsius. So we can just do some useful unit canceling here. We know that we want joules in the end, so we can stick joules on top. We have grams and degrees Celsius on the bottom. Cancel out grams, that means that the mass has to go on top and so does the temperature. So we'll multiply by both 100 and 8 and 8 tenths. This gives us overall 3,687 and 2 tenths of a joule. Really, really, really important thing here is that we got an answer in joules. You almost always want to have an answer in kilojoules when you are doing um, enthalpy calculations. So we need to do a conversion here. We can divide this by 1,000, which would give us 3, point, or 3 and 69 hundredths of a kilojoule. The other thing is that we know that energy is being lost. This is an exothermic reaction, so we are going to assign it a negative value so that we indicate that it's exothermic. And I usually leave this step to the very end assigning a positive or a negative. And just as a note as well, if it is positive in the endothermic reaction, I will actually always write the positive sign in so it's never implied. I clearly communicate if it's positive or negative. So that gives us a final answer of negative three and 69 hundredths of a kilojoule is the enthalpy change here. One useful shortcut you might find as well if you want to make sure you get your answers in kilojoules and don't want to have to mess around with converting units, make sure the mass that you're using is in kilograms instead. The kilo does not cancel out, so you end up with kilojoules at the end of the day. Here's another sample problem that works a little bit differently. When 50 milliliters of one mole per liter hydrochloric acid is neutralized completely, by 75 milliliters of one mole per liter sodium hydroxide in a polystyrene cup calorimeter, the temperature of the total solution changes from 20 and 2 tenths of a degree Celsius to 25 and 6 tenths of a degree Celsius. Figure out what the enthalpy change is. So what's happening here is that we are dumping two solutions together. 
we're combining the volumes of the solutions. So when we actually measure the temperature change in the coffee cup calorimeter, we don't have 50 milliliters of water, we don't have 75 milliliters of water, we have 125 milliliters of water. And that is the most common mistake right there that people make on this type of question. When you combine the uh, volumes together before the react, or in order to cause the reaction to take place, we have to combine the volumes of the water in order to do our calculations because we're going to have 125 milliliters of water in total, so we need to use 125 grams as our mass. Specific heat capacity of the water remains the same here. 50 and 75 grams gives us 125 grams. Our temperature change is 5 and 4 tenths of a degree Celsius, so we can just do the same thing here. Five or four and nineteen hundredths of a joule per gram degree Celsius. We want joules on top because we're looking for kilojoules in the end. Multiply it by 125 grams and multiply it by five and four tenths of a degree Celsius, and that will net us negative 2.8 kilojoules. And like I said with the last question, easy way so that you don't have to do the divide by thousand at the end is change that grams to kilograms. Instead of using 125, use 125 thousandths of a kilogram, and it works great. Now, are we always going to combine these two numbers together? No, but if we're figuring out the mass of the calorimeter, we will be. If we have to figure out what the molar mass is, we actually need to use them separate, leave them separate, because we'll use these numbers twice. When you calculate molar enthalpies in calorimetry, you have to be super careful. You need to understand where the masses are coming from, because when you do the calculation to find the molar enthalpy of the chemical, you need to make sure you're using the right volume. And that volume is going to be the same as one of the masses you used earlier. Okay? Remember that you are always, always, always only using the mass of water in your calorimeter as well. A very common mistake I see is someone sees that you've added this much chemical into a solution and they add that to the volume, but we don't actually do that. So here's a couple more sample problems. When 100 milliliters of half a mole per liter potassium hydroxide reacts completely with 125 milliliters of 4 tenths of a mole per liter uh, hydrobromic acid in a coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature increase from 21 and 8 tenths of a degree Celsius to 33 and 4 tenths of a degree Celsius is observed. What is the molar enthalpy of the hydrobromic acid in this solution? There is a lot going on in this question, just like in the last one. When we are doing the calculation to try and figure out the mass of the water in the calorimeter, we are going to combine those two numbers together. The 100 milliliters and the 125 milliliters convert them to grams, and that gives us 225 milliliters of water inside the calorimeter. However, we need to calculate what the molar enthalpy of the hydrobromic acid is here as well. That means we're going to have to use the volume of the hydrobromic acid again, but we are not going to combine it with the potassium hydroxide for that because we only want to cancel the volume of the hydrobromic acid with the concentration of the hydrobromic acid. Let me show you. So first thing that we're going to do is going to look exactly the same as the last question that we did. We have a mass of 125 grams in this calorimeter. 
How did I figure that out? I added the two volumes together and converted it into grams. But when we do that, <clears throat> that's going to give us uh, 10 and 9 tenths of a kilojoule because we had an 11 and 6 tenths of a degree Celsius temperature change. In our next step, though, we're only going to use the 125 liters of the hydrobromic acid. That's because the concentration of the hydrobromic acid that we were given is um, only applicable to that volume. So if we combine the two of them together, we've diluted the concentration. We can't combine the two volumes. So we can then unit cancel our way to kilojoules per mole. We want kilojoules on top. We want moles on bottom. So we're going to divide the kilojoules by the moles. And then we're going to divide once more by the liters in order to cancel out the liters that we get from the concentration. And that gives us overall a molar enthalpy of 219 kilojoules per mole. We saw that the temperature was an increase here, so that means it is going to be exothermic and it's going to be negative. So we put the negative sign in front.